Good morning, folks. It's John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru. It is Friday, March 27th, 2020. Anyway, welcome. So what we're going to talk about today is supervision of assistance. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is to not be a wuss, but don't be a tyrant. Those of us who have been therapists for a while have probably had a number of assistants that have worked under us at some point. And our role is one of guide, one of mentor, one of supervisor. And sometimes there are situations that you must address with your assistant. I'll give you an example. Uh, one common thing that I've heard in the past, haven't heard it for a while, thankfully, is uh, <clears throat> from therapists that say, my assistant refuses to follow my care plan as outlined. And this is causing problems with communication with them. And of course, it's probably creating problems for the patient as well. And I've heard this as a complaint in the past. And so what I would say to those therapists is, don't be a wuss. Um, you've got to make sure that that assistant understands that they're operating under your license. It's, it's your license. And that they need to be following, according to their scope of practice, the care plan that you lay out. So be very specific with them. Uh, there are obviously assistants that have a lot of experience and who are excellent clinicians. And I've had the benefit of working with many of them, some of them who are subject matter experts in areas I knew nothing about. And I use them for guidance in those particular areas. But when the day ends, you are the therapist, they're the assistant, you have different scopes of practice, you have to follow them. And if you have an assistant that's kind of going off as a rogue and doing their own thing and not paying attention to the care plan that you've developed, you have to lay down the law. And with that said, you don't want to be a wuss, but you don't want to be a tyrant. You know, we're all obviously equally human beings and we deserve respect regardless of what position we are in life and we're equally valuable. With that said, if I find my assistant not following my care plan, I will approach them as one who respects a fellow human being and a fellow clinician. Especially if I, if I was a young therapist approaching a, an assistant who had a lot more experience in patient care than I did, I would approach that with somewhat kid gloves and um, try to talk things through with them and make sure that I, they understand from the beginning, during the conversation, at the end of the conversation, that I have deep respect for them as a person and as a clinician, but <clears throat> I got to lay down the law. I've got to be the one that's responsible for whether the care plan's followed or not. And so I would just encourage you, don't be a wuss, but don't be a tyrant. And I've heard both situations from clinicians where uh, therapists were getting walked all over by their assistants and then therapists who were absolute tyrants to their assistants. And I think there's a good balancing act. And I am blessed. I work with several assistants and have good working relationships with them. And I value them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's me. It's my license that they're operating under. So anyway, John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru, probably wrapping up the week with this video. Hope you're having a great day Friday. It is beautiful outside where I am in Virginia. Take care and God bless.